Greetings again in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We do greet you from Pine Hill Baptist Church in Amherst, Virginia. Here we're coming to you on this second Sunday in December. We thank God for his gracious love toward us, and we give him all honor, praise, and glory for what he has done. The word of God says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein. He said, lift up your head, O ye gates, and lift them up, ye everlasting doors, for the king of glory shall come in. The question is asked, who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. We're going to ask our congregation to stand this morning, and we're going to sing, go tell it on the mountain. Yes. Why don't you go tell it on the mountain over the hill? And, and, and it has the 
opportunity to change everything about you, your, 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 your mindset, your body, your soul, everything in you is getting ready to go through a life-changing experience. This, this, this thing now that is inside of the mother is getting ready to spring forth mm -hmm. into a world that is not so kind. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's not easy for a, a newborn to come into the world to survive. It, 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 it kind of reminds me of waiting for Christmas. Ain't it? Remember when you were young and, and it looked like Christmas took so long to get here. You'd have your wish list and and, and, and all you want to do is get something on your wish list, but mm -hmm. it, it, somehow the parents used that for punishment, didn't they? Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you ain't good, have you been naughty or nice? You know, it depends on whether or not you've been good or not, whether you're going to get what you want. Yeah. So you, you've imagined what you're going to get. All of a sudden, the anxiety of Christmas starts coming in you on and the frustration and the anxiety all get mixed up into Christmas, and you're getting all these funny feelings. Like one time, I, have you ever tried to wait up all night for Santa Claus? Yeah. I, I tried to wait up all night for Santa Claus. I was so I was so anxious about what Santa Claus was going to bring me. So uh, we had the wood heater downstairs, and the chimney upstairs was warm. So I stood up beside the chimney. I'm gonna stay awake all night. You know what I did. Fellow sweet standing upside the chimney. <laughs> Kids downstairs unwrapping their gifts and I'm still like, <laughs> But the thing is, the closer that it gets, the frustration comes, the anxiety comes. You know, getting ready uh, 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 for a birth is about the same frustration. You got your bags packed. The mother is... Uh, contractions that reach the point where the doctor tells you when they get between these certain minutes, you need to find your way to the what? To the hospital. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and all of a sudden, you got your ready bag packed, and I was ready. I was ready to go. I, I jumped in the car, got ready, had the bag in the car. Then I forgot, I forgot. I forgot Brenda. I forgot the what? <laughs> Fathers, we, we, we sometimes get so excited that we forget the most important thing. And Christmas is about the same way. We're excited about Christmas changing gifts and giving and taking and, and, and getting all that we can. We forget about the reason for the season. Uh, we, we forget all about it. So many during Christmas, which is a season of love, joy, and peace, we forget all about that reason why Jesus Christ came in. The frenzy of shopping will get us so frustrated and anxious about everything that we forget all about Jesus. I know the Bible says don't be anxious for nothing, but the problem is that that experience yeah. that we have uh, uh, is, is not uh, uh, conducive to all the time to have that patience and and, and, and anxiety comes in and, and we get frustrated and, 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 and that's a real dramatic time in your life especially when the child is coming into your life mm -hmm. so we were excited we were frustrated, we were anxious uh, to be able to get this thing over with but we had to wait until the Lord did his work mm -hmm. uh, I don't care how much you want to have a baby the baby can't come until the baby is ready to come eh? but the thing about it is we were waiting for nine months for this ball of joy and excitement to be able to come into our lives, but we had to deal with the pain. Yes, we did. The, 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 and we, we had to deal with the pain and the suffering and, 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 and everything that go along with it. But I found out that's life, ain't it? Life isn't all about the joys. It's about also the sorrows and the pain that we have to balance out and learn how to live. So today, I, I, I'm going to talk to you this morning on the subject, "Twas two weeks before Christmas. <laughs> What's the calendar? Uh, Twas two weeks before Christmas. Twas. 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 Two weeks before Christmas. <laughs> two weeks before the birth of Christmas. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to come. And as we come, Lord, we ask that you touch your dear servant. Touch my lips that I might boldly say those things that you have given unto me, that I now give unto your people. Lord, 
We ask for your grace, your mercy. We ask that you might humble us, that we might feel honored to just serve you, Lord. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your patience. We thank you for your darling son, Jesus, that you sent into the world this season as we celebrate, mm -hmm. that you loved us mm -hmm. enough to send your only begotten son, mm -hmm. that he might die for our sins. So as we come to celebrate, we come with thankful hearts for all that you have done in us, through us, for us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Twas two weeks before Christmas, you know, a full term pregnancy is about 40 weeks. You know, they said nine months, but it's usually 40 weeks. And, and all of a sudden, around week 39 of the pregnancy, uh, that, that little one that is inside of you is anxious about trying to come out. It, uh, that, and, and, and he ain't little no more, or she ain't little no more. It, okay. it, that, that they become about seven pounds, average weight, about 20 inches long, and, and the development of the child, uh, the body is tending to now uh, become more more human-like instead of a fetal. It's becoming more human-like, and, mm -hmm. and and the body is producing a certain substances that will able to help it to breathe on its own, to live in the environment that we are in. This thing called Earth, and they'll be able to start breathing on their own. And then most of the changes are small, but they're important. See, God doesn't do all things with great things, but the small changes that the baby goes through getting this ready for the come into the world is happening inside of the mother's body. We can't see it happening. We don't know it, but we know one thing. God is working things out. He, he's continuing it to add fat on the baby's body so uh, the baby can be able to survive. And, and then it, 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 it causes the baby to come plump. So that those little beautiful pictures of the baby's face, a, a, a baby, it, 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 skin is not plump inside of the mother's womb, but when it gets ready to come out, it, 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 it becomes plump. And they have these this stimuli working in the baby's body to be able to get it ready for this world that is coming in. But just as, as the baby is preparing to live outside of the womb, the mother's body is also going through final adjustments, trying to get ready to deliver this baby into the world. Uh, she is creating a milk machine to be able to feed the baby. All of those things are happening inside of the baby's body. And but part of this process, the baby is creating antibodies to be able to fight off what this world is trying to destroy inside of the baby's mm -hmm. body. So having these visions of being uh, of a a, a fully term mother who becomes this domestic goddess inside of her household to be able to take care of whipping up these gourmet meals for the husband. Yeah. I hate to tell you, this is the last yeah. thing on her mind. Yeah. I know she loves her family, but this is not the time. Is this is not the time. If you are thinking about that man, you better dream on. Her cooking will be the last thing on her mind and her family has to get used to these UFOs. <laughs> Unidentified frozen objects. You, you, you better have something in the freezer to be able to sustain you if you can't cook. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, you better get these old time meals. You remember we used to get the TV dinners? You got to have something ready because this mother is pouring everything she got into her child. But just as the babies and the mothers of the day have to face certain challenges, can you imagine the first 10th century, uh, uh, the, the, no hospitals, no, 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 not many midwives, every now and then you had one. So Mary and Joseph had to deal with similar issues that we deal with, but motherhood and childbirth was difficult at that time and had no prenatal care. You didn't, you didn't have uh, no, no proper facility. You didn't have no medical technology to be able to help you to aid in the birthing process. So how were we born in my generation? Mid midwives 
that looked like rocket science compared to what Mary and Joseph had to go through with yeah. in the birth of Jesus. Yeah. And the probability of the baby survive in this harsh environment was almost looked enough. Y'all remember Rachel? Ra Rachel, the baby lived, but Rachel, what? She died. Mm -hmm. the, it, whoever the mother died or the baby died, it was one or the other. It wasn't easy in the, uh, at that time to be able to really deliver a baby safely. So Mary and Joseph had a lot of things on their mind, not knowing at that such a, a young age what to expect. But they somehow they still trusted God. Amen. Amen. Huh? So what amazes me about our text that it reflects what is happening in this season today. Christmas is fast approaching. Yes, but but, but uh, on this day, oh, on Monday, December the 6th, I, I'm working on my sermon and, and trying to get ready for this deadline because on December the 6th, you better have your personal property taxes paid. Nah. Huh? And then we find in this Christmas story the same thing about, about, about G, Joseph and Mary. They were trying to take care of their what? Taxes. taxes. And I found out that they don't care whether you pay your taxes or not because you know what? The penalty is greater than the taxes. <laughs> huh? they, they, they don't care whether you make the deadline. They, they don't give a hoot about Christmas. They don't care about Santa Claus. They don't care about whether you got your Christmas gifts for your family or not. They don't care. They want their money. money. Our text says that then it came to pass. In those days, they went up to decree about Caesar Augustus that all of the world should be taxed. Mm -hmm. And this taxing was first made, what, by Serenius, the governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own town. Pregnant, expecting, well past the due date, don't affect your taxes, do nope. I don't care if you got one child, two child, ten children, whether she expecting twins or triplets, they want their money. money. I feel realize that taxes are a part of life, ain't it? Yep. Huh? What they said, one thing you can be sure of is Delta and, and taxes. So much discussion about taxes as we if they're, uh, they're uh, it ain't new. Taxes has always been a part of things, and mm -hmm. we got to understand that. But 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 the thing about it is, I was reading in James. He said, "Let the brother of low degree rejoice and to be exalted, but let the rich be made low." So we we got this thing about whether the rich should pay more taxes or whether or not. The Bible said that that too much is given, much is required. Much is required. So I don't know what the argument is. Uh -huh. But, but it sounds like it's a political ad, doesn't it, when you look at how the Bible, looking at how taxes now became this, this major ingredient to bring about the birth of Christmas. All right. And right before Christmas come in our lives, December the 5th, we got to pay taxes. We got to pay taxes. Yes, we do. See, if they had to pay taxes uh, to, uh, uh, of their fair share that God had given to them, we should need to be also what? Paying our fair share. That's all I expect to do is pay my fair share. But then we look at week 39. Week 39 of the pregnancy. They are forced to be able to march and to ride a donkey and to be able to get down to a place where they needed to have their taxes paid. Murray and Joseph had to make a hard decision. We, we, we have to count up the cost of what it costs us to be able to have a child to come into our family. You, you, you almost have to do what the master builder did. He says in the scripture, he said that you need to count up the cost. You, 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 yes. you need to count the yes. cost up yes. to understand you've got to be accountable for this child when he comes into the world. You can't keep having babies and not able to take care of babies. So you need to count the cost. There is a cost with having a child whether it's financial or time, mm -hmm. that child needs your time investment. Mm -hmm. That time needs you. That child needs you to nurture it mm -hmm. and, and to bring it up in the admonition of the Lord, so he can yeah, have a respect. Yeah, yeah. So just as sure that we're going to have to face taxes one day, we got to be able to face 
the responsibility of bringing their child up into the world. Mm -hmm. That's taxing on anybody, ain't it? Huh? Yes. Huh? It's taxing on you and your mind and your body and your soul to be able to bring about the birth of Christmas. So in the midst of everything that is happening in a pregnancy that that uh, can't endure contractions. Y'all remember? I remember the name of it. Braxton Hicks Contraction. <laughs> and we ain't had a child in 40 some years and I, I remember that because I had to go through it. Yeah, right. <laughs> what y'all ladies last night? <laughs> the baby is kicking, trying to find its way out. The long trip of the donkey ride caused her more pain. She walked some time with her swollen feet, and then she got back on the donkey, and that didn't ease the ride any longer. They rode to Bethlehem to pay the taxes. It was about to bring them into a place of destiny for the birth of Christmas. Mm -hmm. You got to go through some stuff sure. for the birth of your Christmas. There you go. That's all we're trying to teach you this morning. There you go. And you got to deal with some things for Christmas to be birthed in your life. All right. The Bible says that what? And Joseph went out to Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, and Judea, the city of David, called Bethlehem, because he was the house of the lineage of David, and to be taxed of his espoused wife, Mary, being great with child. Just as we pay our taxes in Rustburg, David, uh, uh, Joseph, and Mary had to go and pay their taxes in the city of David, which is Bethlehem. Their citizenship was there, so they had to go into that city to pay their taxes. Mm -hmm. What amazes me is that God used taxes to bring Joseph and Mary to that appointed place yep. to fulfill the prophecies where the Messiah would be born. Yep. The prophet Micah said, But thou, Bethlehem, Euphrates, that thou art look among a thousands of Judah, yet of these shall come forth unto me, unto the rule of Israel, whose coming forth shall be from old, from everlasting. So this name of the place is very significant. You need to be born in a place called the house of bread. God comes forth to bring us the bread of life. Yeah, the bread yeah. of life to come to sustain us uh, we talked about it in Sunday school this morning. And to eat from the master's table, you need to have the bread of life that will help us to sustain us through. So Bethlehem became this place of destiny. You know, old folks said that, that, that he'll make a way out of no way. Yeah. God will make a way out of no way. You might not understand yes, how God is bringing you yeah. through some things to birth this, this excellency in your life that God has in store for you. God got Christmas yeah. down on the inside of you yeah. to be able to birth this yeah. Christmas inside of you. You need to be able to listen, to be obedient unto God, but he knows what you're going through. Yeah. Yeah. Old Testament prophet says, as far as the heavens is above the earth and so high is his ways above our ways. See, we don't understand why God has taken us through this process no. to birth what is divine which is inside of us. Yes. We don't fully understand it, but God has a way of bringing us to an appointed place yes. and an appointed yes. time that yes. he only knows and he yes. only understands. Yes. Just as David was a lowly shepherd, God elevated him to become yes. the king yes. of Israel. I said this morning, he's a type and a shadow of Christ. So Jesus was to come into the world at, from a lowly estate, just yeah. like David was a shepherd boy. But Jesus came to be our shepherd, yeah. to be our king of kings yeah. and our lord of lords. Yeah. Just as the process of birth is slow, sometimes God has to take us to full term in order for us to understand what he has down on the inside yeah. of us. Yeah. God is trying to birth greatness down on the inside of us, but we have to take it to full turn. You cannot get greatness uh, overnight. Greatness has to be, I, I like that word, it got to be marinated. <laughs> Come on now. Y'all yeah, know what a marinade is, ain't you? Yes. You had to put that piece of meat in there and let it what? Marinate. Soak overnight. Yes. God has to marinate some things in us so that we can get the greatness out of us. But now, for God to birth this greatness in your life, 
you must be willing to go all the way. All right, all right. I, 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 I've said as a kid, I, I hope Christmas would hurry up and come. But now as I get older, I realize that Christmas will come and go before you even know it. Amen. When, when we had our kids, we were still paying on that, 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 that Nintendo almost the next Christmas. <laughs> Christmas dolls ain't no cap pistol no more. No, 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 huh? no, no. no they, 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 they want a PS5 or whatever the new one is coming out now. <laughs> but the thing is, these things are, are, are more expensive. So it, it, Christmas, it takes time for you to prepare for it. See, the thing about it is, Sometimes you, you, you hope tomorrow will come, but then when you start looking at it, I, I realized long ago, Minister, Minister Anthony, I, I, I thought tomorrow never comes. Because when com tomorrow comes, it's today. And I, well, I said, wow, that's that. So you, you got today to get ready. There you go. Today is the day of salvation, ain't it? See, time never changes. It's just our perspective that changes. And we got to look at time from, from God's point of view, not our point of view. So it's funny that my dad, he, he refused to set his watch on daylight saving time. Yeah. And he lived a good 10 or 15 years of daylight saving time. Daddy said, I will never set my watch to the world time. <laughs> he said, look at his watch and say, Donald Clark is, it's eight. But the thing is, that taught me a lesson, see? See, he truly believed that you can't change time. And, 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 and see, what changes is you and I. Our go. perspective changes. To birth the greatness that God has down inside of us, he expects us to go full turn. Mm -hmm. You must be willing to live day by day with the joys and the pains and the sorrows that come along with this thing we call life for him to birth this greatness that has down inside of us. So finally, God will be able to birth what he has for us to accomplish the destiny that he has for our lives. Come on. Our text says that, and it was so. And it was so. That while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. Mm -hmm. See, I, I, I don't know whether the Bible doesn't say whether that was the first night or the second night mm -hmm. or the first week. Mm -hmm. But the only thing I know is in my, 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 my subject said it was two weeks mm -hmm. before Christmas because we got two weeks to Christmas. <laughs> it was two weeks to Christmas. But the thing is, you have to prepare for that time that is coming. The joy of seeing a small crying child at birth is an amazing miracle feat that's beyond anything that you and I can ever imagine. Amen. After week 39, week 40 finally comes in and we're seeing it the first time this miracle of childbirth. Don't you ever think that your, your, your work that you are doing is in vain. God is trying to birth something down inside of you. You might get frustrated. You might not think it will never come. But God has made a promise to you that he's going to get things done in your life. And your efforts will not be unrewarded. I know he said that what? Every good and perfect gift comes from above. Yes. And, but that doesn't mean that it's not going to be some hard labor. A birth of a child has to come, but the labor has to precede the child coming in order for you to work to get that destiny that God has already birthed inside of you. You've got to be able to work and labor and go all the way. Because what happened is you'll never see birth. Come on. If you're not willing to go all the way, you got to be able to go through the suffering and the pain, the difficulties, the letdown, the interviews, the cancellations, and, and, and the saying no. And what about your naysayers? The one said that you ain't going to never be nothing, that yeah. you'll never be yeah. anybody. Yeah. you got to be able yeah. to work through the yeah. labor of yeah. all of yeah. the discouragement yeah. and everything, the pain, the 
and the suffering in order for you to birth that thing that God has inside of each one of you. Thank you. Every perfect gift comes from above, but it does not disqualify the labor. When God has sown his word deep down inside of you, he said it will accomplish. Huh? It will accomplish his will for your life. But the labor does not go away, does it? The labor, you got it, it's required for you. To have labor. The Bible says that if you don't work, don't how are you going to eat from the master's table? Yes. How are you going to enjoy the blessing that God has for you if you're not willing to go through the labor? I'm on, preacher. All right. I see young ministers, they, 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 they accept the call to the ministry. And three weeks later, they want to church. You got to labor by sitting under. Joshua sit under. Caleb sat under. Huh? Hey, Paul, God sent Paul to one of his enemies, Ananias, to what? Sit under. Under Paul, we got Timothy and Titus, you know, Barnabas, and all of those people that followed Paul. You got to sit under. You got to be able to be willing to go through the process. And the labor of the process in order for it to accomplish what God, but he said that when the time has been accomplished, mm -hmm. that thing that God has down inside of you, yeah. you are able to yeah. birth it yeah. to be able to bring forth that which yeah. God yeah. has put inside of you. Thank you. Isaiah said that what? So shall my word go forth out of my mouth, and it shall not return unto me void, mm -hmm. but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing thereof I send it. God has something inside of you. You got to go through the frustration, the pain, the suffering, the labor, in order for to accomplish that thing that he has put down inside of you. Amen. It just ain't going to pop out of you just because you, mm -hmm. you wanted that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Get pregnant, pop out. No, get pregnant nine months. Yeah. And, 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 and look, and it ain't going to pop out. <laughs> See, when, when, when God sees goodness that he has revealed for our life, when we see the goodness of God mm -hmm. that he has revealed for our life, it should move us and everything around us to give him some praise. We, we, see, we should be able to see Christmas around yes. us, yes. around the corner, even before he hadn't got here yet. Yes. Huh? Yeah. Uh, do I have any witnesses in the house? Have you ever seen your blessing mm -hmm. before it ever even came? Before Christmas showed up, you saw Christmas coming your way. Yes. Your blessing was on the way. And you should just give God some praise. Lord, I ain't got there yet. I haven't been able to receive it yet, but I'm looking for the promise that God has in store for me. I know my Christmas coming because he's going to come and I'm going to go through my labor. I'm going to go through the process. He's going to accomplish what he has sent for my life. So I, 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 if I'm prayerfully hoping, I should be able to see Christmas coming. Yes. Even though it hadn't got here yet. Huh? See, we should know that in faith, that God's promise is about to be revealed in our life. It should come to our surprise when things happen in our life. You prayed for it. Yeah. Why didn't you expect it? Come on, man. Huh? You prayed for it without expectation. Then you wonder why it didn't show up. <laughs> I don't know about y'all. I prayed with expectation, huh? Yes, See, yes. God knows what you've been through. He yes. knows what you're standing in need of. He knows every weakness. He, he yes, knows yes. every ache. He knows yes. every pain, yes. every up, every down. He knows what you've been through to, to get you through to your destiny. Yes. yes. Thank you. Paul says that. We have not a high priest that cannot be touched with our feelings and infirmities, but in all ways he was tempted like us, but not sin. 
See, we, what we go through is not strange to God. No, it's not. Huh? Through his son, Jesus Christ, he felt every pain, every sorrow, every ache, mm. he, every mm. emotion. He, see, why did, why did he send Jesus in the form of a person? Mm. So that he could have the emotional yes. feelings and aches and pains and sorrows that you and I. So now God says, it's not new to me because I've already felt them through my daughter's son. God is getting ready to do something in your life. Do y'all believe yeah. that this morning? Yeah. But all you need to be willing is to carry the thing for full term. Carry it through. Are you willing to go all the way? Yes. Yes. Because right. yes. look, I hate to tell you, you'll never see your greatness mm. if you're not willing to go all the way. Come on. Huh? Come on. Have, you ever, have you ever been that close? To the promise mm. and gave up. Mm. Huh? See, you looked out of your natural eyes instead of looking out of expectation. Preacher. You looked out of natural eyes instead of expectation. You prayed expected, but you let your natural eyes take charge over you, and what you thought you saw through the promise became overwhelmed, but yeah. what you saw with your eyes, and then you quit. You gotta go all the way. You gotta be willing to go through the difficulties and pain. And you know, as we close, it's almost Christmas. It's almost Christmas. Twist two weeks before the birth of Christmas. All right now. God is about to birth Christmas. Yes. In the life of you, in the life of this church. Mm -hmm. It's time for us to go tell it on the mountain, ain't it? That Jesus says, that I tell you that it should not hold their peace that these stones will cry. We need to be crying out because I don't want no rocks crying out for me. Isaiah said that the mountains and the hill will break loose before the singing and the trees of the field will clap their hands. I don't want no rocks. I don't want no trees praying, praising God for me. I want to give God thanks for myself. Just like the pains of childbirth causes this mother to cry out, we need to understand that inside of us, God is trying to birth something that is great. The yes, pains yes. and the pains of, of our childbirth are, are already inside of us, and we need to be crying out to the Lord. Yes. It's almost time for the push. Mm -hmm. uh, see, I said the baby don't pop out. Your, your, your destiny is inside of your, 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 your Christmas. It's trying to birth inside of you, and, and you don't want to push. I remember in that waiting room, in, 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 in that Lamar's birth room, we sitting there, and, and my wife was trying to push, and the doctor said, ain't time to push yet. <laughs> See, sometimes you try to hurry up. To get through the process, you you wonder why God ain't blessed you. God is blessing you, but it ain't time to what? Ain't time to push yet, huh? And, and you you don't, don't, don't you don't you feel the pain of, of what you want for your life inside of you, and, and you are ready to push, but God said don't 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 push yet. It ain't it ain't it ain't time to push yet. Don't you feel the, your destiny kicking? Yeah. Inside of you, you yeah. feel that foot that popped up in the rear. Yeah. You, you yeah. wonder, Lord, when uh, am yeah. I going to get to the place that you got for me to, to excel in my yeah. life? When yeah. is my destiny going to come to fruition? He said, it ain't. Yeah. He said, it. Thank you. I found out that when, 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 when you feel that, 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 Future that God has for you kicking. Mm -hmm. Kicking inside of you. And, and somehow you, you've you been holding back. Come on. Because he told you not to push. Yep. You, you're waiting for that moment. The timing is right. And, mm -hmm. But see, sometimes when, when it hurt, when you can't push, and when it ain't ready for you to push, you, you need to just call out to the Lord. Lord, help me. Yes. We, we, we had a few Sundays ago that, that the woman said, Lord, help me. Huh? You got to call out to the Lord every now and then. So, so you're hurting on the inside, but 
because you know this thing that God has destined for you is about to break forth and, 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 and you need to hold back until it's ready for your destiny to come to fruition. Yeah. And, 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 and you're waiting for the right moment and because he told you not to push because your time is not yet. Yep. But I, I like that man. Yet don't mean it ain't gonna happen. What did I say a few seconds ago? No, don't never mean never, does it? Yeah. It, it ain't time for you to push yet. But when the time comes, or when 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 they they yeah. told my wife that, that you had full dilation, mm -hmm. then it's time to push. <laughs> when, when you know that God has prepared you, taking you through your education, taking you through your trial, taking you through your interview, taking to you to your first job internship. Now it's time for you to what? Good. It's time for you to push. See, God hasn't brought you this far for you to push back. It's time for you now to push. I press toward the mark of the high calling of Jesus Christ. I need to press and push toward that destiny. See, somebody missed that this morning. It's time for you to push, but don't push back. Don't push back. Push forward. You can push back against God when he is planned for your life, but life don't give you no success when you push back against God. You yeah. got to push with God. He yeah. wants you to push to release that thing that's inside of you, that, that, that something that is inside of you yeah. that you try to push to something. Now God is telling you to push. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you the doctors told my wife, don't push until the time is right. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, that should help somebody this morning. Oh, you, you, you need to push when the time is right. God got something that he's trying to birth inside of you, but you want to push back instead of pushing out at the right time. I, I know it's hard to wait, ain't it? It's hard to wait when you waited so long and, and you're trying to birth this greatness that he has inside of you. It requires for you to be patient, ain't it? Yeah. But the Bible says that when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman. I know you're all ready. You're ready to turn this thing loose mm -hmm. that God has put inside of you. But God is still telling you to hold on, hold on. because I'm not through with you yet. Amen. Now, God's blessing is about timing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. when, when the fullness of time comes. Yes. God will work this thing out in your life. Yes, oh, that old son, oh, he, I know he won't listen, but God will work it out. That daughter that you're going through, God going to work that thing out. Yes, that husband that you're struggling with, God going to work that thing out. Yes, that wife that you're dealing with, yes. that mother-in-law, that yes. mother in love that you're yes. struggling with, God is going to work that thing yes. out in life in yes. the what? fullness of time. So just hold on. Christmas is only what? Two weeks. Two weeks away. It's, it's not your time. Mm -mm. Don't, don't, don't turn God loose before your times and your season come. Because mm -hmm. if you turn him loose too quick, you ain't going to get your, your blessing. God is telling you to get ready. Huh? Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Do you feel it? Do you feel this church about ready to explode? God is about ready to get ready. God is telling Piney Hill to what? To get ready. He's getting ready to accomplish something beyond anything that you and I can imagine. And he is telling us to do is just try to hold on. It's time for us to push and not push back. He's telling us Christmas is only two weeks away. And I'll fulfill in you that which I plead. And which I will prosper you to be what I've sent in order for you to do. Mm -hmm. So the question is, are you ready to birth Christmas, the greatness, yeah. the destiny that God has in store for you? Are you ready to have something to happen in your life that's above and beyond anything else that you could ever think or imagine? You got to be ready to push. Mm -hmm. You got to be ready to deliver that thing that God has given unto you so that you can be able to be that which God has sent for you to do and to accomplish in your life. God wants to do some great things in you. Yes, He does. He wants to do some great things through you. Mm 
But in order for to get to that destiny that God, you got to be able to be willing to go through the pains of childbirth. Mm -hmm. That birth of that thing that he has sown inside of you mm -hmm. is ready to be revealed to the world. Mm -hmm. So you can't push back, but let's push to be able to birth that greatness. Mm -hmm. He has some of the greatest things ahead of us. Amen. But if we push back, Come on. We'll, we'll never birth that thing that God has inside of us. Mm -hmm. We gotta be able to push forward. Push forward toward what God has in store for each one of us. Cause God got great things down inside of us all. Yes, mm -hmm. and, 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 and that's the birth of your Christmas. Mm -hmm. yeah. The blessed gift that God has given each one of us is down inside of us waiting. Mm -hmm. Waiting to be able to come forth, to be able to present itself to the world mm -hmm. so that it can become the testimony where men, women, boys, and girls will be able to see the greatness of God revealed in you. I, I, I love what they said. Can anything good come out of natural? Mm -hmm. Can anything good come out of Piney Hill? Amen. Huh? Can, can anything good come out of Major Gilbert? Amen. Huh? If God has birthed that thing in you, he's conceived it. He's taken it full turn. And the only thing he's asking you to do is hold back. Hold back. Hold back. But when the appointed time comes, when the time has been accomplished, mm -hmm. and now it's ready for me to push. Yes, sir. To be able to reveal what God has already put. So many of us in church is wondering why God hadn't given me this. God hadn't given me that. No, God has got it in you. You just need to push. Yes, don't, don't let that thing stay. Hey, look, do you realize how many stillborn blessings? <laughs> stillborn blessings that are inside of us. Mm -hmm. huh? That you didn't nurture the baby. Mm -hmm. huh? Most of them say, well, what caused the baby to die? Hey, your lack of faith. Come on, preacher. Your, your lack of nurturing. Mm -hmm. your, your, your lack of, of, of expectation. And if you don't expect them, what you going to get? Nothing. In order for you to birth that greatness that God has in store for you, in order for you to have Christmas, the blessed gift that God has prepared for each one of us, we got to be willing to go full turn. Go all the way. Go all the way. Allow that, that thing inside of you to be born, to be able to glorify God. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I didn't come to glorify me. Mm -hmm. I came to glorify the Father, the Father which is in heaven. Yes, God got something inside of you. Mm -hmm. The only thing you got to do is be ready. Yeah. Be ready. They told me, they said, uh, Mr. Gilbert, Ms. Gilbert is fully dilated. So you need to go put on your robe and put on your shoes and put on your garb and get ready for natural childbirth. And I had eaten up all the candy. So I didn't have that. My mouth had got dry, but the candy was gone. And I had sat there and waited with her struggling. The contractions and the pain was so hard that she had put her feet on the foot rail of the bed, put her arms on the rail, and she had bridged up, and I was right up there with her. Y'all think I was one? I was right up there with her. Digging hinges, I was going through it with her. Then they said, she's fully dilated. She's ready to deliver. So I went out in the waiting room to 
get my garb on. I got the little shoes on with my shoes and my, my vest on, my coat. And I got on in there. And I said, I believe I got to go by the, other, go by the telephone booth. You know what the suit man had to do? <laughs> Lord, I need some help. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> I, 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 went into the, I went into the telephone booth. And I, and, 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 and I bowed my head and I prayed. And I said, Lord, don't let me black out in front of this one. <laughs> See, there comes a time that you need to be what? Strong in the Lord. There you go. Operating by the power of his might. There you go. Not your might. You Lord, go. this is too big for me. Yes, my, yes. My daughter's going through some struggle. I told her, you need to turn it over to Jesus. Because yeah. this, this battle is what? Yeah. It's too big. It's too big for you. So when I went in the, I went in the telephone booth, this was still, you got to realize a long time ago, they had telephone booths. And the Lord strengthened me. I was able to come out of there and to face this childbirth. When you see a child being born almost falling into your hand. Brother, that's a new thing, ain't it? <laughs> and and, and you, you can't do this on your own. You need God. God is going to birth this thing inside of you. But you got to be ready, ain't it? Yeah. You got to be able to receive that gift. Amen. And, and now nurture that gift. Because after the child is born, after your, your promise is born, after your, 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 your dream has come to fruition, you got to be able to now have the accountability yes, yes. to care for this thing yes. that God has birthed inside of you, yes. to be able to give glory to him yes. so Amen. that you can be able to bring forth the newness of what God has in store for each one of us. Amen. Two weeks until Christmas. So we need to prepare for the coming days. Uh, get your ready bag packed. That's what they call it. Get your ready bag packed. So when you get ready to go to the hospital, have everything ready. Mm -hmm. And like I told y'all earlier, don't do it like me. Don't, don't leave going to the hospital. We got the wife stand outside the car. <laughs> you got to make sure that the most important thing in Christmas is who? Don't leave him out. Make sure that he is the reason for our season. God bless you. Hope you're encouraged by our word today. Let us bow. Father God, we do thank you, Lord, this day. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for blessing us, O oh Lord. Through this season, with the birth of your darling son, Jesus Christ, we don't know the day, we don't know the hour, but we set aside this time to be able to celebrate the birth of Christmas, our hope. For everlasting life, our hope for tomorrow, our hope for eternity is wrapped up in this one child named Jesus. Mm -hmm. Lord, we hope that we have been obedient to your word. We hope that we have been faithful to what you have given us to say. Mm -hmm. And we hope that we have received what you have conceived inside of us. Mm -hmm. That we can be able to birth yeah, yeah. that thing that you have given unto us. So that we can give your name glory, your name, your name praise, and your name honor. Yeah. In Christ Jesus' name, let the household of faith say, Amen. 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 Twelve, two weeks before Christmas. God bless you. May heaven ever smile upon you. We'll see you again next week on Facebook. Follow us here at... Uh, Major H. Gilbert Sr. Facebook page. God bless you. And may heaven have a smile upon you.